Uncle Joe. Ang tunay na pagkakas mento kay jamla ka ni tibti sa mga ka ay nang pagdal pidika chun tu dam na sa panya dam ay mento ka tang samlo de dal tipo sa say sum jui. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Heder, we were on page six, item eighty-eight, document number E three slash three nine zero. You said that you interviewed that person in Phnom Penh. And can you help me with who uh, did the original transcript or who transcribed this interview after the interview had taken place? Um. Well, it wasn't me. I don't think I ever did a transcript or a translation of that myself. Uh, to my knowledge, the transcript Thank you. Um, could I ask for some assistance, please, in retrieving this document from the side of, of the desk? I'd like to move, if I may, to item 89, that has the D number D210 slash 10. Again, without mentioning the person, I'd like to show you a document in connection with this interview. And can I explain that I'm, I'm not giving the names of people who haven't testified in this court? Mr. President, can this please be handed over? Mr. Hedda, can you, I, I can see you looking through the document, um, please take some time. My first question, once you've had the chance to look, is does that show on page one an interview by you? But please take time to answer if you want to continue looking. Um. Well, the reason I'm taking some time is that, uh, although the heading of the document 
ដោយរូបខ្ញុំក៏ដោយ Without, without more time and a chance to listen to the original tape, the original tape and aside from whether it's the name, did, from looking through it, have you been able to remind yourself whether you conducted the interview or can you help us? Looking at the, the content, the line, the kind, and the substance of the uh, certainly looks to me like my work. Thank you. Mr. President, can I please make this application that Mr. Hedder be able to have that document over lunch? Um, so that he can take some time uh, to look at it and that we might be able to clarify this early this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Hedder, I'm going to move on, if I may, to another matter. But if you can keep that there, thank you. Can I ask you next to look at item 91 on page 6, which is document number E190.72, and I can name this person. It's to do with Van Rip. And again, Mr. President, can I please hand over a relevant document? Uh, Mr. Hedder, this consists of uh, some typewritten pages and some handwritten pages.
Uh, yes, this is the, the handwritten notes are notes in the style that I normally do have done interviews in years. Uh, I can't remember uh, that is home then in Kandal province. And the interview was done while at SOAS. Uh, also uh, the same period I was working under my SOAS auspices. Uh, oh, thank you. The typescript is, is yours, it's the court's, not mine. But so is your, the handwritten notes are yours. Can that please just be handed back so that we can put it in our folders? Mr. President, all parties in the court have had this index. I don't know if it will assist for that to form part of the record of Mr. Hedder's proceedings so that those who have to make up the transcript have this document to help them. The suggestion is it's attached to the, to the daily record written by the Greffier. Thank you, Mr. Hedder. What I want to do next is I want to take you through selectively some portions of your book in its short-term Cambodian communism, that is E3-22. Mr. President, in accordance with previous practice with Mr. Chandler and Mr. Short, can I please hand to Mr. Hedder a copy of his book so that we can properly assist the court by going through extracts from it? Yes, Mr. President, I'm just asking to give a copy of this book to Mr. His book. Mr. Hedder, your file should contain on the first page, file one, Cambodian communism and the Vietnamese model. Next, you have a selection of the pages which I'll be taking you to. Next, you have footnotes if you need to refer to them. And those are broken down by chapter. You then have indexed on the right-hand side of your file the chapter numbers, and I'm going to be taking you to particular pages. Now, can I stress it has to be selected? But can I ask, can I ask this? Can you... Just give us some idea as to what the motivation was behind writing this book. Uh, academics aren't supposed to have motivations. Um, we do it out of, not out of the goodness of our hearts, but just because we're somehow, by some strange circumstance of events interested in the certain certain uh, uh, a kind of history to the writing of this particular piece of work, which is um, an expanded version 
part of the introductory chapter. វាជាផ្នែកមួយនេះសក្រីបដាមពាក់ប៉ុន Chẳng ai bàn chiếc nhầm tụi tôi mà Nâng nghe chìa Bỏ bọn đất đi ai Can I take you please to And can I stress that uh, To answer or to repeat My answer to Judge Ta Cartwright yesterday nhầm, nhầm xong, There is not a, a French version Or it has translated extracts In Khmer translated, translated extracts and that I will be asking for every single portion to be translated today. Mr. Head of page 26 and that is within chapter 1. English ERN 00 3-9 Now it seemed to me that you're dealing uh, on this page with events in the 1950s At the top of the page 1950 is mentioned Then 1951 And then 1951 And it's talk of talking about Cambodian communists the extract that I'd like to deal with is in the following terms, and I quote. Whatever the Cambodian numbers that the Vietnamese numbers instilled them with an attitude of implacable hostility towards the revolution's enemies, foreign and local, declared during a visit to Vietnam the only way for the Cambodian people to live in freedom was to kill all imperialist aggressors who were merely a collection of mad dogs who can and must be exterminated. There is a footnote there, number 80, and your footnote quotes a speech given by Siv Heng at the First Congress of Vietnamese Peace Defenders. VNS R2 December 1950 It's the source of the footnote here and VNS I didn't understand what that referred to Can you help what or where you sourced the speech by Siv Heng with VNS VNS uh, that stands for Vietnam Youth Service, and it was the official new service of the then Democratic Republic of Vietnam, uh, disseminated in various languages, including uh, English. And if I recall correctly, a more or less complete set of VNS um, news releases uh, on file in the, uh, in the library of Cornell University. Thank you. Um, on the same page, there's another extract, and I'm quoting. At the same time, the no Cambodians must carry out a program of execution of traitors in the zones that they were liberated and deal with the numerous secret agents that had infiltrated into the movement to try and sabotage the revolution and destroy its organizations. And the footnote number 82 refers to the Khmer Peace Committee, Khmer Armed Resistance, October 1952, a pamphlet produced 
which you cut the Rangoon branch Vietnam. So was that source the same source as the one you've already covered? VNS. and you're talking about events in 1960 and I quote. In January 1960, the southern leadership ordered an upgrading of the strategic priority given to military action, conceding that political struggle ដោយសារតាមការតស្រួលនយោបាយរួមជាមួយនឹងការតស្រួលរបស់ប្រជាជនគឺថាមិនខ្លាំងគប់ក្នុងដើម្បីគ្រប់គ្រងគឺទាំងការតស្រួលនយោបាយនិងបណ្ដាប្រព័ន្ធត្រូវតែរួមនយោបាយគ្នាទាំងពីរនេះគឺថាត្រូវដើរតួយ៉ាងសំខាន់ន
ឆ្លាមគឺចិត្តព្រោះពោតមានដែលអឺអ៊ិនសុភាពសរសេរឡានអ៊ិនសុភាពរីយ៉ាងលេហ្វទីជាមានឆ្វេងនិយមកម្
given to to Nate Thayer by somebody by the name of Kim Nguyen. Đời mình nói chung một khắp muốn new word in G U N. Um, I believe he's now in prison here in Cambodia. Nhưng mà chữ nhưng 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 đang gave Nate to understand that either based on something that Nguyen had written himself or notes that Kim Nguyen had taken verbatim from something that Nguyen had written or said. Thank you. Still in chapter 4, page 69. English it's talking about contradictions and the extract is as follows. The contradictions within Cambodian society among the five main class elements that the Vietnamese had identified as existing in Cambodia in the early 1950s, brackets, peasants, workers, petty bourgeois, capitalists, and feudalists were also portrayed as virtually identical to those the Vietnamese Workers' Party said existed in southern Vietnam in 1960. The Kampuchea Workers' Party Congress declared that various complex and very entangled contradictions could be identified, including between the workers and the bourgeoisie, but that the dominant and most antagonistic one was between the peasants and the landlords. Thus, the struggle in the Cambodian countryside was the most basic one for the revolution, requiring mobilization of peasants who comprised 85% of the country's population. As purported victims of the capitalists and the landlords, they were the most exploited and numerous class. The main domestic content of the revolution in Cambodia, therefore, was the liberation of this 85% of the people from the landlords. Close quote. Footnote 25. Pol Pot Long Live, which the full title is Long Live, the 17th anniversary of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, dated the 30th of September 1977, page 30. That total document is E3-145 on the case file. And the second source was the statement of Nguyen Chia, which is E3-196. Mr. Hedder, can I ask you first about the first source, Pol Pot Long Live? Can you explain that document and how it helps you on this footnote? Um, I believe that what I used for this was the Khmer version of the speech made of the speech made by Pol Pot in the country of Khmer. 
ពីការតស៊ូរបស់បាក់លោកខែកញ្ញាឆ្នាំ VN organization known as GK Ram. a group of Cambodians there. ក្រៅពីការនៅថាជឿជាទុកចិត្តលើឯកសារដែលធ្វើឡើងដោយសេវាផ្សាយព័ត៌មានបរទេសនោះអ្វីដែលខ្ញុំជាយាមប្រើន
the Congress thus recognized two interrelated forms of struggle, political and armed, concluding that eventually the Kampuchea Workers' Party would have to conduct people's war to overcome all obstacles, make any sacrifice, so as to resolutely and finally to win victory. Footnote 51 again refers to the statement of Nguyen Chia carrying on. Because the U.S. imperialists, their lackeys, and all kinds of exploiting classes used dictatorship and force in their attempt to kill and terrorize the people, political action alone would not succeed in crushing and overthrowing these enemies of the revolution. This would require transforming unarmed revolutionary forces into a revolutionary army. Footnote 52 in support of that references a speech by Nguyen Chia, the 16th of January 1977 as broadcast on the 17th of January 1977 by Phnom Penh Radio celebrating the ninth anniversary of the formation of the Republican Army of Cam <laughs> Sorry, Revolutionary Army of Cambodia. Uh, again, can you help us a bit more on this source? Uh, yes, that's a U.S. foreign broadcast information service daily report translation, so I've taken it from their translation. At the time, the Khmer original is published in the Revolutionary Flags, was not available to me. Carrying on on the same page with the same expert, the Kampuchea Workers' Party had to be ready to use every form of struggle, political, economic, and armed, Footnote 53 refers to Nguyen history. You've already covered that. The next sentence. According to some, the, quote, first form of struggle required was the use of revolutionary violence through politics, close quote. But armed revolutionary violence would one day follow in the form of both political and armed struggle. Footnote 54 references Pol Pot, Long Live. You've already covered that. To remind everyone, E3-145. Mr. Hedder, still Look chapter Hedder, 4, page 78. English ERN 0039373741, still on the 1960 Congress. Quote, <coughs> The 1960 Congress also resulted in the formation of an eight-person Kampuchea Workers' Party Central Committee. And it goes on with Tu Samut as Secretary and Nguyen as Deputy Secretary. Together with Sa, they comprise the Standing Committee of the Central Committee. The other members of the Central Committee included Ying Sari and Kiev Mia from the Urban Organization, Tu Kargo from the base areas, in the southwest and Pum, if I've said that right, of the east. And at the last footnote is 72, which is a footnote to Nguyen history that you've already covered. Kiev Mia, 
who was he and what happened to him. Now he got me into his now like that. It's one of those trademark crackpot Steve Hedder transliterations that uh, leave people confused. It would more commonly be transliterated Gale Mias. That's K E O, new word M E A S. And he was a veteran communist since the late 40s, early 1950s, who after the um, Geneva Accords of 1954 and the transformation of the, the party struggle into political struggle was a prominent leading figure in the overt wing of the party that attempted to contest elections. Um, he then remained and went underground after that kind of struggle was deemed um, impossible to continue. Uh, traveled quite a bit with Paul with Pol Pot, um, but ended up out of political favor. And after on or about April 75 was effectively placed under house arrest. Um, and then when the situation inside the party became one of serious crisis or was seen to be as one of serious crisis by the senior leaders, was transferred from house arrest to S21 where he produced some confessions and then was subsequently executed. What's for our confessions? Can I just clarify? So for all the questions I'm asking you, I'm certain, the defense will correct me if I get this wrong, but I'm certain I'm not asking you questions based on confessions. Now, still on Cambodian communism, page 78 still. There's an extract towards the bottom. The anti-imperialist rhetoric uh, and trenchant social critiques voiced by Hu Yun, Hu Nim, and Ku Sampong primed them for Campuchia Workers' Party recruitment, helping open them to even more radical explanations for what they saw and make them ready to contemplate revolutionary action against a government that allowed no other forms of dissent. A peasantry seemingly condemned to the perennial hardships resulting from low yields and incomes and sharing with students a vision of the regime as synonymous with corruption. Footnote 74 refers to David Chandler's uh, book, Tragedy, that is E3-1683 on our case file. My question is about part of the sentence, about Hu Yun, Hu Nim, and Q Sompong primed for KWP recruitment. Is there anything else you would like to add on this? Uh, without looking at the Chandler original, no. Uh, moving English ERN, zero zero General topic, Q Sampong, Q Nim, and The KWP treated them as patriotic personalities to whom it fed propaganda based on the party's united front themes 
of anti-Americanism, social justice and freedom for workers, peasants and intellectuals. Footnote 96 refers to the statement of Nguyen Chia we've already covered. Nguyen ສາຍກໍມາຕອນຊ្លើຍຕໍານາຕາບັນຍາປະທິດຕົມຈຸຍລູກເມຕະວີກໍເປສໍາອົກຄຸນລູກປະທານ ແລະຖ້າອາຍຸສະບັດສະນາການຄືຂອງຍົນ well, firstly, Mr. President, it's not even an objection, uh, so I ask him to continue, but I, can I just say this? Uh, the Chamber has obviously laid down the rules for Mr. Hedder's testimony, that he will be a witness of fact in relation to documents on the case file or advising, email of the 1st of July of this year. The question shall be directed primarily to evidence the witness gathered, either during the interviews he conducted, or the evidence he accumulated in research which forms the basis for the books or articles authored by him. So that's all I'm doing. In accordance with the trial chamber's direction, I'm asking him about his book, the extract from the book, and the source of the books. Can I remind the chamber of the testimony of Mr. Short and Mr. Chandler? where exactly the same procedure was adopted with neither objection nor observation by the defence. And I please continue. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Hedder, page 23, continuing the quote. Nguyen was particularly impressed by Q. Sampon's fidelity to these things and his effectiveness in mobilizing popular forces that became available for recruitment by the party, ensuring that those outside the party could not find out who was leading the revolution and to make them falsely believe that he, Hu Nguyen and Hu Nim were its real leaders. Footnote 97 refers to the statement of Nguyen Chia, page 21. Carrying on, Ying Seri also prized Q Sampon's usefulness in garnering support for anti-imperialism and reform from urban intellectuals, civil servants, the national bourgeoisie, and even Sankum military officers, who credited his views in part because of his academic credentials. Footnote 98 refers to an article published in the Vietnam Courier, number 347, the 15th of November 
That is E3 My question, Mr. Hedder, is this. When we're talking about garnering support for anti-imperialism and reform from urban intellectuals, civil servants, the national bourgeoisie, and even Sankum military officers, can you just help me on Sankum military officers? Not familiar with that part. Uh, Oui, je formule une objection qui va dans le même sens que l'objection que vient de formuler la défense de M. Munchea. Nous voyons avec ce qui vient de se produire à l'instant que, de toute évidence, la comparution de M. Eder est détournée par le procureur afin de se livrer devant vous et le public à une lecture d'extrait de ses ouvrages. On vient de lire un long extrait du livre de M. Heder et finalement on pose une question sur un, un point de détail qui est sans rapport avec le champ de la déposition de ce témoin tel que vous l'avez déterminé. Et, euh, mon, obje mon objection vient donc en renfort de celle de la défense de Munchea pour euh, demander que l'on passe à une autre forme de questionnement de cette personne dans le respect de ce qui a été déterminé par Munchea. Again, not even an objection. All I'm doing is this is the extract from the book authored by you. What's the footnote? Can you help us with the minutes? There's nothing here about expert evidence. Two people were, as a matter of fact. It's not a matter of opinion. Can I please proceed? បាទសេរីចំទោសរបស់មិត្តវីអន្តរជាតិ Mr. Uh, that's simply a, a shorthand uh, reference to the Sankum Rih Niyum regime. Uh, that is to say, the regime on the, in the period when the country was led by Gordon Sien Nguyen. Thank you. And the source about Inzuri, the Vietnam Korea, uh, that is the source about Inzuri, the Vietnam Korea. Our case file seems to show a newspaper, but can you confirm? ជាកាសែតតើលោកអាចមានជាបានទេនៅកន្លែងនេះអឺ <coughs> Can I ask you please to go to chapter 6, page 102, English ERN, English ERN, English ERN, English ERN, មួយសាធារណរដ្ឋមន្ត្រីរសៀលនេះ
ហើយនឹងឲ្យជួយគាត់ត្រឡប់មកចូលរួមមកចូលមកកាន់កន្លែងផ្ដល់តែខេត្តកម្មនៅក្នុងបន្ទប់សម្ណាការនេះវិញន